Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here today as we launch our thrilling new exhibition, Dinosaurs Among Us. Are dinosaurs actually extinct? You know, actually that the link between dinosaurs and birds is really the traditional point of view. It was just ignored for 130 years or so. And it's only been in the last 25 to 30 years that it's been you know, researched more fully. There's actually a lot of similarities between modern birds, the things we see today, and some of these extinct dinosaurs. So probably the first thing that everyone's going to notice in the exhibit is they're all covered in feathers, just like modern birds are. And flight is actually the most physically challenging form of locomotion. And so modern birds have a bunch of anatomical specializations that allow them to fly. Of course, they have large wings, they have strong flight muscles, um, they have relatively small body sizes. But if you go back and look at the evolutionary history of this group of animals, they didn't start out that way. You mean this thing standing here couldn't fly? Oh, no. gee, I'm disappointed. <laughs> we have as much evidence that Tyrannosaurus had hair as we have that hominids like Australopithecus, like Lucy or Neanderthals, uh, had hair. We can predict then that feathers or feather-like structures were present in the ancestor of all dinosaurs. This shaggy guy is you Tyrannus, and you say, well, how could we ever envision that? The fact is, is that these fossils that are found in uh, Liaoshi in northeastern China actually preserve soft parts and preserve feathers as well, which allowed us to be able to make this full-sized reconstruction of the animal. You have the crocodiles, which branched off way early, and they have the lungs, the sort of one-way airflow through the lungs. And then you get the sort of classic um, stegosaurus group of dinosaurs and they apparently have some feathers and you get the big sauropods and the wishbone comes in once you sort of specialize into the theropods and you get the tyrannosaurs which clearly had feathers. Here you start getting more and more adaptations for flight and these are all still dinosaurs. These are not birds, but they're clearly feathered and flying and doing lots of things we now associate with birds. And it's all only in here that we start seeing things we now traditionally call birds. This is only within the last probably four or five years that they found this guy. There was a period where the local climate got cold. Even a big dinosaur like this picked up some insulation Feathers are used for a lot of things in living birds. You know, we're sitting and having a beer one day, and we just tried to come up with all the different things they're used for. And in living birds, it's well over 20. They're used for things like feathering the nest. They're used for by herons to make an umbrella for them to be able to see it in the water. Uh, they're used for flight, obviously. They're used for display. They're used for uh, a thermal blanket. They're used for flight. So there's a lot of things feathers are used for. Dinosaurs probably gained and lost feathers depending on what was advantageous, you know, since it was so easy to switch between the two of them. Different species, you know, some would just use them for display, some would use them for insulation, and there's also multiple types of feathers. Well, if you think about, you know, your Thanksgiving turkey, the wishbone, the thing that you pull apart there, modern birds have that and so do these extinct dinosaurs. Things like the eggshell macrostructure, uh, where the living birds have either three or four layers of eggs, that the three layered eggs first appear in very close relatives to living birds, and then more primitive dinosaurs have the, the more primitive two layered eggs. So there's lots of different kinds of evidence that's coming together. They captured a, a fossil of it actually sitting on its nest. So I guess those are eggs. We know that some of these extinct dinosaurs constructed nests and they brooded their eggs, um, which is just fascinating, and some of them probably flew. So there's, there's anatomical and behavioral similarities there. Their closer relatives among these dinosaurs have three fingers, they stand on two legs, so there's a lot of similarities there um, in anatomy. Early theropods had more fingers on their hands. Uh, living birds only have three fingers. Right. And advanced theropods like dromaeosaurs and troodonids and oviraptors, they also have three. But then as you go more primitively and stuff, is that they, they add extra digits. 
There are actually a lot of these extinct dinosaurs that appear to have feathers on both their, you know, their arms to their wings and their legs. Microraptor, the ones you're seeing around here, those are the fossils that have the most wing-like feathers on their legs, and so a lot of people interpret that to be sort of a four-winged glider. Mm -hmm. um, they interpret these animals as sort of gliding down the trees. There is a lot of controversy there. They probably were using their wings for some sort of aerial behavior, whether it was gliding or flapping, it depends on who you talk to for that. Now, a lot of the other fossils that they found that have feathers on their legs, the feathers were a lot shorter and they don't really look like wings. So they were probably more more similar to the feather like the feather trousers that you see on like a hawk or a raptor of some sort. Like people always assume it was gliding. Honestly I don't see any reason why it couldn't have been flapping. It's wings, all living birds flap their wings aren't any specialized gliders or soars. So like living birds they're probably using their wings for multiple different things. So living birds use them to thermoregulate, to display and of course to fly. And so these animals were probably also using them for many different things and potentially to engage in some sort of aerial behavior. So let's give it a smaller wing and a large breastbone and small wings, light body, large breastbone. And it doesn't go anywhere. Let's let's give it a big wing. Large wings, light body, body large breastbone. Yeah, this is